Live from the Jersey Shore to the world. Get up, get out, do something. Wake up with Jeremy Grunin. Take the show wherever you go. Download the free Radio Pub app for your smartphone or tablet. Join the conversation. 732-505-1160. News Talk Radio WOBM AM 1160 and 1310. Listen online at WOBMAM.com. Up oh, the red light's on. That means I should talk. Hey, welcome back. Wake up with Jeremy Grunin. It is 7.09. It's 34 degrees, getting all the way up to 37 today. Wintry mix is afoot. One to three inches if you're uh, on the coast. Three to five if you're inland. I have no idea whether you're inland or on the coast. I couldn't draw you a map. I don't know where to put the line. I couldn't help you with that. You're going to have to figure it out. Uh, but that's just what the weather report says. We are here on 1160 and 1310 WOBM AM, streaming live on the Radio Pup app and at WOBMAM.com. Feel free to join the conversation at any point, 732-505-1160. Our next conversation will be with Richard Fosnock. Richard, and by the way, I I do, I I know I'm going really fast over his last name because I'm a little bit uh, confused on how to pronounce it, (laughs) so I'm just going to move along. Um, anyway, we're here with Richard. Richard is the uh, is the principal of Walnut Street Elementary here in Tom's River. And so, uh, good morning, Richard. How are you? Good morning, Jeremy. How are you? I am fantastic. Welcome to the show. Uh, it's cool the way I say uh, welcome and good morning. Like, we haven't been talking for the last 20 minutes here. Like, <laughs> nobody really knows that, though, because we That's don't right. simulcast or anything. So, um, anyway, listen, uh, um, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, excited excited to hear about what's going on uh, in uh, at the elementary school level here in our school system. Uh, but before we kind of dig into all that, why don't you give the listeners a little bit about your background, where you came from, how you ended up, uh, uh, how we ended up so fortunate to have you here in Tom's River running one of our schools. Yeah, so I um, always wanted to be in education uh, from, you know, a young student at, at the middle school level and, and going up and, and really wanted to teach and coach and uh, have gone through that process and, and started teaching and really, uh, as I was teaching, really found a love for it and um starting to help other teachers. So I became an instructional coach, uh, really doing a lot of professional development for teachers and working with teachers on best practice. And I, I think that paved my way uh, into administration and, and went back for my administration degree and uh, became an assistant principal at Lakewood Middle School and then uh, moved on to uh, principal at the Lake, Lakewood Middle School for the last four years. And when this uh, opportunity came about in Tom's River, being a part of the Tom's River community and my students, uh, my children in the uh, Tom's River Elementary School, uh, you know, being a part of the district was important to me. So um, took that opportunity and, and very fortunate that uh, Mr. Healy and his team felt that I was the right candidate for the position and have spent the last six months at Walnut Street Elementary School and, and really enjoying my time here in the district. I do think it's uh, telling on some level that that's now twice, once off the air and once on the air, that you've referred to your children as your students. <laughs> I just, which I think actually that one probably is okay, but I think when you refer to your students as your children, maybe that, it, maybe some parents might have an issue with that. I don't know. It's just, it, and it also well, definitely would make back to school night very difficult on you. True. But, the, you know, the <laughs> one thing I think when I'm making decisions as an educational leader, I'm always thinking in, in that type of light that, that these are my children. And if uh, my children are going to the school, what's the best decision and what's best for them? And I try to base a lot of my uh, choices on that. And I, I feel like that's that's really helped me um, going through this process. Well, that was uh, very nicely done. Really, really well. Good segue <laughs> there. I'm sure your uh, your uh, significant other right now is is uh, is smiling um, ear to ear because you really uh, pulled yourself out of the fire on that one. So, talk to me about Walnut Street Elementary School. I know. Uh, so we have how many elementary schools do we have in, in Tom's River School we System? We have twelve elementary schools in, wow. in Tom's River Regional School. So uh, you know that's a it's a big district and. Uh, you know we're 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 doing a lot of nice things at, at Walnut Street as well. All right, so 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 talk to us. What are some of the like? What are some of the like? I hang my hat on these program kind of things that are happening in Walnut Street Elementary that we need to know about. Of course, I'd have to start with the Big Brothers Big Sisters program. Um, thanks to the Grunin Foundation, we've been able to to get that off the ground, and we have about sixty students that are participating in that program. Uh, since uh, the month of December, and we've been, you know, really, really excited to see the connections that uh, the students are making with one another. And I think it's a win-win both for High School North, which are our bigs that are coming over to Walnut Street on Monday and Tuesday to uh, mentor our students, um, and, and some of the work that they're doing. You think about uh, what they were working on in December and January and getting to know one another and then having our, our littles 
um, kind of reflect on where they are and, and creating goals and, and things that they need to improve on. And, you know, you have to think that as our bigs are going through that process as well with our littles, they're, they're also taking that in and they're also creating goals and reflecting on their own behavior as well. So it, it's just, a, like I mentioned, a win-win for, for Tom's River North High School and also for, for our littles at, at Walnut Street. And, and we know that our students um, benefit from, from that mentoring and, um, you know, look up to our bigs as, as role models. And um, it, it's just really been fantastic to see the progress of that program at such a, you know, in, in such a quick amount of time as well. It's only been two months. And um, as I mentioned to you at the start, that our attendance has been fantastic, um, you know, each and every day uh, when you go down there, the, the cafeteria is packed with both bigs and littles. And, and to see them working together has been great. Um, and also, our, our, our community is excited about it as well. The parents that are involved, you know, they've had nothing but great things to say. So it's it, it's been nice. Cool. I, I know that when I uh, – when I uh, uh, so I drive by your school literally every day. Um, mm-hmm. And it's not because, you know, I'm following up just to make sure everything's going okay because, you know, we have something invested in Walnut Street Elementary. It's because – I pass your school all the way to my office, okay. you know, so uh, that's that's kind of the way to go. Um, but I would tell you that I see, you know, and I'm not I'm not the most trained of eyes, but it does look like you have um, an extremely diverse population of Walnut Street Elementary. So this is not um, I, I don't want to say this is atypical for Tom's River schools, but I think you definitely have probably one of the larger cross sections of folks that that uh, comes in and out of your doors every day. Is that a fair assessment? Absolutely. And, um, you know, I think that diversity is our greatest strength. I think it's something that uh, we can build on. And, and as you mentioned, maybe not all the elementary schools in Tom's River have that diversity. So, um, you know, we, we've done a lot of different things around that and, and trying to, to, to get our students um, aware of all the, the, the multicultural you know, uh, backgrounds that are within our school. And I think we've done a nice job of that. And again, I think that's something that we could grow upon. And I think one of our greatest strengths uh, as a school. Cool. Uh, so what other, uh, what other, uh, any other fun kind of stuff you got going on at the school? Like uh, any cool fun programs that we should know about? Uh, you know, something that we're getting a lot of buzz about is our, our positive behavior support um, in, in schools. Um, and, and really, that's focusing in on the positive behavior and the good choices that our students are making each and every day. And I guess the best way to explain it is if if, if you have a group of students walking in line um, down the hallway and, you know, sometimes you always have those one or two students that, that may be off, um, you know, chatting with a friend or, or not doing exactly what they were supposed to be doing. Oftentimes, the focus would be on those one to two students. We want to change that mindset and we want the focus to be on the 18 students that are doing the right thing and recognizing those students for that positive behavior. So we have something that we call ROAR tickets. Okay. And our students, um, if, and, and ROAR stands for being respectful, open-minded, accountable, and responsible. And our, our students have been responding to that. And when the students are making good choices, the staff members in our in our school are handing those students a ROAR ticket. Those tickets then go into a larger bin. And, um, you know, this, this past Friday, my supervisor, Ms. Brown, and I, we walked into the cafeteria, and the students, there's a buzz about it, and we start selecting uh, roar tickets out of the bins, and those students get uh, rewarded with some type of prize. So uh, we've been working with our PTO, which is just fantastic, and um, they may be getting some spirit wear, some Wildcat T-shirts, whatever it may be, or, or possibly, um, you know, a gift card uh, of some kind, a small gift card. And we recognize those students and pulling out their names for making good choices. And the great thing to see is when you get a round of applause from the entire cafeteria for being responsible or for being respectful. So um, that's just been a really positive thing that we're creating some buzz around. So we're excited about that. Awesome. I thought I saw one of the kids uh, driving a new Audi the other day. So that's uh, (laughs) that's pretty cool. So we're with Richard Fosnacht. He is the uh, principal of Walnut Street Elementary here in Tom's River. When we get back, we're going to talk to him about what kind of programs they have going on to help our kids at an early age start learning about careers, learning about STEM, et cetera, et cetera. Be right back after this. Wake up with Jeremy Grunin wherever you go. Download the Radio Pup app for your smartphone or tablet. News Talk Radio WOBM AM 1160 and 1310. Welcome back. Wake up with Jeremy Grunin. February 9th, 722, 34 degrees, getting up to 37. Wintry mix, ice, snow, somewhere between 1 and 5 inches, depending on where you live here in uh, at the Jersey Shore. We are on 1160 and 1310 News Talk Radio, WOBM AM, streaming live on the Radio Pup app and at WOBMAM.com. Feel free to call 732-505-1160 to join the conversation. We are joined by Richard Fosnock. He is the principal 
Walnut Street Elementary School. And when we left, Richard, can I call you Rich? Absolutely. Rich. Yeah. Or I always feel, by the way, when I'm with someone from the schools, like I call you like Mr. Fosnock, because that's like what I'm used to. I don't want to get a natural thing to do. Yeah, I don't want to end up like in the principal's office, which would be you, because uh, that's, you know, I may have spent some time there. Rich but, works just fine. Yeah, Thank you. Yeah. Um, anyway, so uh, Richard, let, tell me about uh, what you guys are doing around kind of career preparation, around STEM, around kind of. Uh, moving our young, impressionable youth's minds towards thinking about what they want to do as they as they grow up. I, I think our overall instructional approach is is just that because we're we're asking students to be able to collaborate a lot more in the work that they're doing and and to work with one another on you know project based learning and and take a team approach. And I think those types of things in our daily instruction really help our students to prepare for the careers that um, they may be involved in. You know, one particular thing that's happening in our fifth grade, uh, in one of our fifth grade classrooms in Mr. Rule's class, uh, we got a grant through Ocean First, um, and it's called Classroom Alive, and our students are, are working with uh, live trout in, in the classroom, and um, that's been really great to see, and the focus of that is on clean and cold water. So when you think about a program like that and the students um, being engaged in, in that type of hands-on learning, really where the, the trout eggs came into the classroom and they had to, uh, to, to pick the appropriate ones and then uh, take them through the process of becoming fingerlings and, and, and then eventually released into the, to the sea. So we were able to uh, bring in technology and the students are, are measuring and monitoring the water that, that they're working with. So you think about the technology skills that are, are in play there and then um, math as well being embedded into that. And then when you think about reading and reading um, informational articles uh, about that, so cross-curricular, and then the students just really have to work as a team uh, on that type of project. And, and collaboration is, is key in preparing our students for the 21st century and, and those type of careers that are, are out there today. Um, we also have uh, New, Jersey's, New Jersey Makers Day coming up on uh, March 18th, which is going to be uh, a big day throughout the district. And I know uh, all the schools are preparing for that. So we're excited about uh, what that's going to bring for our students and, and having the opportunity to discover and to create on their own. Uh, because really, that's what we're preparing our, our children for, careers that may not even be created yet. Uh, so we have to give them those those skills and, and the ability to work with one another and take that team approach and, and be able to create and think outside of the box. Awesome. And Maker's Day, is that the same as it was the last time, kind of at the Pine Belt Arena, where it's a, or, or is it a smaller thing this time? Or well, New Jersey Maker's Day is happening on March 18th and 19th. Oh, so, so this is somewhere else, right? That, that's correct. So I believe it began uh, in the public uh, libraries okay. on the 19th, which is, is Saturday. So last year it was one day. Gotcha. And then they moved it a day back so our school Schools could be involved. Gotcha, well. gotcha. That is awesome. So we have some really cool STEM stuff and some uh, some good stuff to kind of move our kids' minds along. And uh, this is the second day in a row we've talked about trout in the schools because yesterday we had Scott Corbett on from Ocean Academy and he was talking about how they were they were working with trout in the schools and all I could talk about was trout amandine and then I started thinking about those garlic crabs and. <laughs> It just got me hungry. Um, Richard Fosnacht, he is the principal of uh, Walnut Street Elementary. When we come back, he's going to tell us what he would do if he had a magic wand and could change something uh, in his sector, in the schools, what he could make it better just by waving his wand. Wake up with Jeremy Grunin back after this. The news is next, live from the WOBM Newsroom, the Town Square, New Jersey News Network, and Fox News Radio. Wake up with Jeremy Grunin, News Talk Radio, WOBM AM 1160 and 1310. Live from the Bob Levy Broadcast Center, overlooking the Toms River, it's time to get up, get out, do something. Wake up with Jeremy Grunin. Be a part of the show, 732-505-1160. News Talk Radio, WOBM AM 1160 and 1310. Listen online at WOBMAM.com. Welcome back. Wake up with Jeremy Grunin. Grunt, Grunin. It's, uh, sorry, I just learned the name. It's uh, I'm new. Uh, 736, February 9, 34 degrees, heading up to 37 here on 1160 at 1310 News Talk Radio, WOBMAM.com, WOBM <laughs> streaming on the Radio Pup app. 732-505-1160 if you want to join the conversation. We are here with Richard Fosnacht. He is the principal of Walnut Street Elementary. And when we left, 
we asked uh, the magic wand question. What would you do? What changes would you make? What issues would you address? And, of course, Richard, because he's an overachiever, he actually has two issues that he would love to be able to overcome. So with that, Richard, I'm going to let you take it away. What what would you do if you could fix two problems here? You know, Jeremy, I think one of the things that, that school's facing, especially with some of my middle school background um, and, and parents are facing, um, although technology is fantastic, it, it also creates some challenges uh, for our students. And we, we see that you know, students may be being exposed to, to things at an earlier age uh, due to, you know, how accessible it is for everyone. So, you know, we want our parents to to really stay on, on top of that. And, um, you know, students have different ways of um, getting to things that even as, uh, you know, parents were, were unaware of. So I think the, the technology in the world um, has created a lot of opportunity for our students, and we're excited about that. But I also think it provides some challenges for for parents and and for schools, and and we have to make sure that uh, we stay on top of that. And um, you know, we we brought in uh, you know a, a speaker from the Ocean County Prosecutor's Office to speak both to our students and our parents about that, uh, because you know that's something that we're seeing that that's impacting um, our students a bit. So that's something to for parents to be aware of moving forward. Cool. So, and I think you uh, you also mentioned that if you if you had that wand, you would create an unbelievable war chest of of loot. Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that you you know any any school district uh, faces a challenge uh, of funding uh, at this point in time. And when you look at like, like we mentioned the um, success of Big Brothers and Big Sisters, and and having our students for a, a longer amount of time in the school day to to do more with them. Uh, is always very helpful. So that that question of funding is is always a challenge for school districts and in, in prioritizing and maximizing the funds available. So, of course, we would love, um, you, you know, more funds and, and things of that nature to to do the the things that we know is is uh, best for children. Right. So you know, you bring up uh, so two good points. Number one, uh, social media. It's a it's an animal that I think very few parents are prepared to deal with. Uh, you know, and and I think uh, my wife and I we have the we have the discussion all the time. Should we have our kids' passwords to their computers and to their phones? And should we, we should we be able to spot check them? Should we um, should we be able to should we be like kind of logging in as them? Should ha- what's the level of what's the level of interaction you should have? And at what point does it become micromanagement? At what point does it look like you don't trust your kids? You know, and that's the line I think we all walk. Uh, so it's a great point, and I don't, I don't think anybody really has the answer, right? I, you know, I don't think so either. But I think being knowledgeable about it and right. um, you know taking a look uh, on on w- with our children is is something that's um, important. And I also think educating our children uh, about you know what could be. Um, and speaking to them, uh, you know, about what's out there and, um, you know, if they have questions to to come and, and bring them to us. And that's what we're also trying to do as a school, because sometimes it's easier for a child to go down to the guidance counselor and have a conversation with them about that. And then we know how to appropriately contact the parent and, and open that, you know, those lines of communication. So I think um, just educating our children um, about the dangers of it is is a good step in the right direction. And then uh, for our parents to be as proactive as they possibly can. Right. I think, it, again, it's a it's a great point, and it, it's, you know, I've had many, many conversations with other parents because I, I don't know what the right answer is. Um, you know, I, I personally, I tr- choose to, for the most part, trust my children, and I guess the only advice that I would ever give is I feel like if you are very much involved in your children's lives and you are, you know, you are spending uh, sufficient time with them uh, that you will note, uh, behavior changes. You will note when things, I think, start to go a different way, and then you Absolutely. can start to kind of dig in and and uh, and 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 kind of get to root cause. Uh, Richard, I just want to thank you so much for your time this morning. Um, by all accounts, uh, you know, and and in my drive bys, you are doing a fantastic job <laughs> over at Walnut Street Elementary School. Uh, you you definitely. Uh, look, that is that is definitely one of the has been one of the more challenging schools on a number of fronts. Um, but uh, but you're doing a great job, and and uh, you know wish you all the best now and in the future. Thank you, Jeremy. Uh, and uh, listen, and and by the way, Richard has a, a three and a six year old. So uh, so when he gets home from work, 
uh, his work is just beginning. <laughs> so uh, so there you go. Richard Fosnacht, uh, the principal of Walnut Street Elementary School, uh, was our guest. We will be back. Wake up with Jeremy Grunin right after this.